Hello there. So it's been over three weeks since I last created a video, uh, which means YouTube will have effectively deleted me off their platform and probably about three people are going to see this video. But you know what? I'm, I'm pleased to have you guys here. Mom, Dad and that one stranger. So nice to have you. So the last time I created a video, just before, it was just before the weekend where I took the comma to the Festival of Speed. Uh, I didn't take it up the hill, um, nobody, I wasn't invited for some reason, bizarre. Uh, so yeah, I took the karma and uh, had a good weekend there. Plenty of drinking, some cars, here's a few clips from that. <laughs> after Goodwood I had the emptying the Somerset barn planned, I had a lorry uh, secured by a mate from another mate uh, which was going to turn up and we were going to move the mill, the lathe, the two posts etc. Uh, that plan has fallen on its ass like multiple times, so many times and I was getting pretty desperate, it was getting to the point where I was trying to rent a trailer and I was going to buy like a three and a half ton capable 4x4 four four and do just many trips back and forth but we finally got the lorry sorted, it had a high ab, that's why I was hanging out for it because you can rent lorries easily but not one with a high ab and it, uh, we really needed that to lift the, the mill etc uh, maybe not at the farm end uh, in Somerset because they've got a forklift there but I've not got a forklift here and one of the things I was looking at was buying a forklift so I've asked, I asked local farmers if they could help unload a lorry if I came if I turned up here and I didn't have a high ab and even that was tricky because the mill's a ton and a half and it, uh, one of my local neighbours has got a something with tracks he said he can lift a ton and a half but he said I can't so I can't drive it on the road to get to you. So it's just a logistical nightmare, but good news. Here's the two post lift. We took that down, loaded that up, and here it is. It's just waiting for me to dig out the concrete a little bit thicker, uh, probably like a metre wide channel where the foot ends are gonna go and basically they won't fall over. Because at the minute this stuff is only like three inches and it needs at least six. So I'm gonna dig it out a bit, bit of rebar. And that'll be good to go. And that is going to go one post there and then the other post roughly over there. And picture it now. Do you know what? I'll Photoshop it in. Perfect. Okay, and then over here we have the mill, which is absolutely such a chunk. It's like Sir Kill a lot of Robot Wars. And then we have the lathe. Bit of a disaster about that. I'll come back to that in a moment. The mill. Oh my god, that is heavy. Ten and a half, the internet says. We high abbed it to about there. And then I moved it over here a little bit on a pallet truck. And then I had to use the engine crane to basically get it off. Um, it is there. It is staying there. It's uh, nice and out the, out the way. And uh, not too close to the door. Perfect. Now, this bad boy, I screwed up with this big time. I basically, same again, had to get it from the doorway to over here. The forks on the pallet truck didn't reach all the way in. So I used an engine crane off that side, pallet on that, pallet truck on that. Got it to very close to it and then as I, as I basically tried to twist it round it came off the pallet truck and it just went straight over and uh, yeah it's, it's done 
that's quite a quite a depth. You can even see like teeth marks in it, which is from this gear, which unfortunately is um, well. I'm only going to be able to use the bottom half now, aren't I? Uh, that is the feed into the gearbox, so that shaft comes and it does all your auto feeds in and out. Now, this it is a damn shame, right? But this lathe, there's a shaft in there which is bent, which means I can't actually slide along and use the slower feed gears. So that's why I did a bit of machining to allow it to take a bigger gear so I could slow it down. Um, so I've got spare gears. I'll just have to put one of them on and it is what it is. This, I will be honest, the quality of cut from this is not brilliant. It's a, you know, it's missing the... <laughs> gap bed bit it's for me it's good enough but if it eventually gets replaced i'm not going to be sad and then as well as all that i have my rack in all the engines and gearboxes or particularly gearboxes were just sat around on the floor so i've managed to start loading that up you probably just saw that uh, I've put a motorbike on top. Um, yeah, who who do I think I am? That's a proper, like, yeah, who do I think I am? It looks cool though, doesn't it? That is a 1975 Honda CD175. I bought that, oh Christ. 2016 I think I bought it probably about six months before the scimitar I didn't really have any big projects going on at the time bought that it did I'll, I'll insert a picture of what it looked like at first and then what it looked like eventually uh, and it I sort of wanted to make I want a Royal Enfield right but uh, didn't I thought it would be cheaper to buy that no and it, I made it into like a military type looking bike uh, I didn't like I cheated basically. I didn't raise the suspension or anything. I raised the mud guards off the wheels, and uh, it's a fake. It's a phony. It's it's too small a bike. It's it looks cool, but basically, it was well, it then didn't have enough power to pull the taller tires, etc., and the extra weight. I regeared it. Still didn't work. And it, then I bought a CB250 engine, which is like double the power. And then I bought the scimitar, and it. Uh, that just got pushed to the side. So as one of my mates said the other day, welcome to Adam's Museum of Abandoned Projects. I wonder if I could charge a fee for entering. Who knows? So yeah, plodding on with tidying this place up and getting it to how I want it to be. I've got some tower scaffolding turning up next week, uh, which will allow me to fit the lights and then... It's just getting the two post in and this place is up and running exactly how I want it. So really getting there now, which is which is good. And a big milestone, a sad milestone of giving up the Somerset barn and getting everything into this one. And, you know, I was paying rent on that place still uh, whilst not using it. So that's, that's one thing that's... Uh, be achieved. Um, I don't have that anymore. But sad times. I, I've rented that barn off Ed. Uh, since 2018 and uh, I've absolutely loved having it. And, it and it's thanks to to them that we are where we are today you know we never we were never looking on uh, we were never looking for a, a, a house with a workshop previously and then when we had that taste we were like that's what we want I want the workshop Rowena wants me out the house perfect Anyway, enough about the barn. This coming weekend is Int Saab, which is like an international Saab uh, get-together. Uh, they have it all around, all around the world. Although, I'd imagine it's probably just Europe, isn't it? They ever had any outside of Europe? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But this year, it's at Gay Dunn, which is the British Motor Museum. And I'm going to take the Comma and the 900. My mate Richard is going to be driving the 900, and I'm going to be taking the... Comero. So there's a few little jobs to be done on the pair of them. The 900, not much at all. The cooling fan is hanging off the radiator, so I'll reattach that. It is currently reading hot on the gauge, like 
max chat on the gauge, but it's definitely not run, it's definitely not overheating. So I don't know if the temperature sender's uh, gone dodgy, but if I've got time, I'll look at it, but I'm not overly fussed on that. The cooling system seems pretty healthy on it. Uh, quick levels check, and this one is pretty much good to go. This one, though, is definitely a bit more involved. This has done a lot of miles in the last year. Uh, so I'm going to do an oil and filter change on it. It needs ATF oil add into it. Headlights flicker when you touch the wiring under the dash. Another thing, uh, I've got quite a lot of brake bias towards the rear at the minute because I've been carrying loads of stuff. I need to adjust the pedal balance bar under the front and set it more forward, basically. That's enough talking, let's do something. Just in time for the light to disappear, you know, in my unlit barn. Let's do some maintenance. Did you know I had a barn? Did I mention the barn? Yeah, I've got a barn, but I don't like to talk about it. Glad I've not installed the ramp yet. Laying on the floor. What year is this? 2017. I just noticed though, I, had, I did change this oil in January 23. Oh well, committed now. It's only money in it. It looked a bit dark anyway. Also note, the air filter, not in an ideal position, and probably too small. Also notice, intercooler, again, not in, in an ideal position. Stubby van stuff. I will redo it, but it needs uh, fancy TIG work to make everything. This is going to be changed to a charge cooler, and this air filter needs to needs a really tight pipe, and then the air filter is still going to have to be underneath somewhere. That's the way it is with these vans. I'm actually having a real hard time with the UAS air filter pipe work. Um, that looks like it's going to have to come back into the behind the driver's seat, go up behind where I sit, and then I'm probably going to put one that comes through the the bulkhead there. It's it's tricky, you know. It's not as easy as um, uh, an engine swap in a car. Anyway, I'm making excuses. I have to get this oil filter. Hmm. I have to put you down. Whilst we're waiting for that to drain down, let's get a fresh filter and write today's date on it so I know when I fitted it last. So, people say, why do you have Saab engines fitted for everything? Nobody's ever asked me that, by the way. And this is the reason. Bulk buy-in filters. I've literally saved about four quid by buying all these, so it just makes perfect sense to engine swap everything. Let's moisten the seal a bit. I have thought about like cutting my old filters open to have a look inside them, but I realistically, why? I'm just going to upset myself, aren't I? If it's still running, ignore it. That was a lot of fun and games, trying to work out where my oil jugs were, looking through various boxes. And uh, by the time I eventually dug him out, it's dark. Right, just filled it up. On this, I've got a sight glass rather than a dipstick because otherwise you'd have to lift the seat every time you want to check the oil. So something you may not have seen before, if you notice, the oil is on the 5 litre mark. I'm going to start it up. It's quite interesting to know how much actually is around the engine at any one time. Tell me if it leaks, alright? It's about a litre, isn't it, that's going around the engine at any one time. I find that quite interesting because on a dipstick you can't really see that, can you? Because it just splashes oil all over it when it's running. But uh, yeah, um, I made that sump. So less than a litre fill covers the oil pickup. And then um, 
a litre is around the engine at any one time. So as long as you've got about two litres in it, you may, and it's all nice and level, you may still be sucking up oil. But uh, I like to run it between four and five litres. The more you run it, the cooler it's going to run, isn't it? Because when the oil's not going on the engine, they're sitting in the sump, it's going to be cooling down, isn't it? So five litres, that's what I like to go for. Right, it's the next day. I've magically had a haircut. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm going to whip off the APC valve. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this previously. The APC valve, I've always got lots of them knocking around because everything runs the same engine. One of them was only making 0.8 bar on the 9000 and it turned out to be the APC. There was a problem with that. Very unlikely I would have thrown that away. So I may have inadvertently fitted it to this one. So I'm just going to swap it in, swap it over uh, to another one and uh, see if it picks up that boost. Because at the minute it's making 209 horsepower. It's pathetic for an old 60s van. Pathetic. Let's up that a bit. Right, just pulled the heat shield off above the turbo because when I was at the dyno and this thing was only making 0.8 bar, I tried to wind the actuator up a bit and it was very difficult to get at and it was very hot. So I was like a hungry bear just ripping things out of the way. So yeah, I'm just going to straighten this up a bit, put it back in. Okay, just getting it fired back up. I have fitted the other APC valve, got the uh, heat shield back on nice and straightened up. Uh, also at the dyno, I was at first when I thought there was uh, a, a boost leak when it was only making 0.8 bar. I, I suspected the idle control valve pipe work because it wasn't on very well. Uh, so I pulled the idle control valve pipe off and get all hooked up another piece of pipe just to bypass the idle control valve and I then tightened the throttle cable at the pedal slightly so it would idle um, and yeah it didn't find any lost boost there but the idle was terrible so I've just put the idle control valve back in and as I was doing it all I noticed the TPS plug as I touched it came off uh, as in unplugged so I don't know if that was unplugged all along or what but um, starting it up now throttle pedal slacking back off and it's idling much nicer than I think it ever has done bit of extra boost does the APC tick certainly does Oh, mad idol. This isn't me. That was very strange. An unrequested high idol then. I've had it with some of these, all the Saab stuff. Once you start mapping them, they uh, start to misbehave. The idle control valve gets a mind of its own. And you could swap in another idle control valve and that doesn't solve it. It's somewhere, it's like the ECU is going, yeah, go on in, 3,000 RPM idle. I don't know if that was that then or, or what. It's, it seems to be behaving now. Looking like I might have to unplug that idle control valve. Just done the flickering headlights. The issue with that was this piece of dash wood here. I attached to it the fuse box and the relays. And what happened, this gets incredibly wet. This had bowed, pulling this down and pull in some wires so I've just added in straightened it up and added this piece of metal in so now it doesn't pull on them and the headlights work just like they should and then on the back I've just welded up check strap on the door bit of a weird setup on these where 
people are used to old, oh, not old, but used to van doors to shut them, you basically force them. But on the comma setup, it's a bit strange. Just you put this tab in the way and they can't shut. And then you move that and then they can shut. Uh, somebody forced mine shut and uh, cracked it. I just added a load of crap welds on and uh, it now works. Woohoo! Commas all good. Now on to the 900. Just love the way the bonnets open on these. It's like facing Batman head on. So on this one, I've got to add an APC back in because I cut the plug out to use it on something else and the fan has been a terrible lash up for a while. It's just held on my cable ties now. Uh, so I need to make that a bit more secure. Like a cable ties movie? <laughs> no, of course not. It's on YouTube now, you guys have seen it. I gotta do it off. Decent. Okay, so it's Friday. We're about ready to leave. The comma's all good to go. Richard, who turned up last night, Give us a wave! Give me a hand to finish off a few jobs uh, and it, uh, he's just giving this a good a good scrub. Uh, we've, we're trialling a, a bed which we're going to use. Uh, I started making up some seats a while back uh, which are going to be part of this van's uh, interior once it's done and the seat folds flat and then you've got a nice big bed. Uh, but they're not finished, you know me, so uh, we're just sort of got them in this temporary setup but this is how we're gonna uh, sleep on the weekend uh, and the, the roof leaks like hell so we've got a car cover to go over the top of it. it it'll look fine it'll be fine just warming the 900 up now we're gonna do a oil and filter on it and uh, I've finished the radiator fan that's all nice and secure lovely APC's back on that's all good to go. So yeah, oil and filter change, then we can hit the road. One thing that's happening now, which we are gonna ignore, is that the gauge is reading flat out. Uh, but it's not. The, the, the car is not hot. You can, you know, that's not too hot. The fan is kicking in like when you'd expect it to. So I'm not worried, but if it overheats, it's his issue. He's driving it. Right. Look at that. Right, the place is a tip, but both uh, the Comma and the 900 are done, uh, and we need to hit the road to get to Intsab. Uh, this video will probably be out after Intsab, I'd imagine, so I'll just have to guess how it went. Um, big thanks to all those that won. That big thanks to all those that voted for me to win uh, Show and Shine winner with the uh, with the pair of them. Really, I can't believe everyone loved the plates on the 900. And uh, women, if you can stop asking me to sign your breasts, please. It's getting pretty awkward now. Catch me in the next one where I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, I do know what I'm up to. Next week, I've got a course for the plasma cutter. So I'm actually going to learn how to use it properly. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Bye.